Mr. Grassley, for your interest in this issue. Uh, Mr. Harris, you and I were on a panel together in March, and good to see you again. Um, could you explain more about how companies' market power exacerbates problems of disinformation, extremist conduct, and bias? Yeah, well, um, and it's great to see you again, too. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Senator. Um, the you know, if there's anyone with an alternative model to the current problems that plague us in misinformation, disinformation, and virality, can they succeed in the marketplace? Um, there's something in, you know, uh, the literature called Metcalf's Law, right, where uh, the power of a network grows exponentially with the number of participants. And really what we have between social media platforms is a race to Metcalf. Once you have a dominant platform, it's very hard for there to be an alternative. And so market concentration means that even if there are alternatives that are trying to do any and solve any of the problems we're talking about today differently, they're going to get bought up by the existing platforms. And if you're a venture capitalist, the only way you're going to uh, fund an existing company is by knowing that there's an exit pathway. And we have kind of all learned the lesson uh, as all the sort of competing platforms and, and, and things that have come out have just been acquired by the existing companies. Yeah, and could I, I, think, yeah. I think that point just can't be lost because there are regulations we can put in place. Um, that's one way to do it, and you can do both things at once. But if you have a company that buys out everyone from under them, um, in the words of Mr. Zuckerberg, they'd rather buy than compete, and buys companies like Instagram and or WhatsApp, we're never going to know if they could have developed the bells and whistles to help us with misinformation because there is no competition. Do you want to comment more on that, Mr. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, just just as you said, um, uh, there. If if WhatsApp were to remain independent and and let's say we're living in some alternative reality where now WhatsApp was was separate and we saw these problems and WhatsApp decided they're going to spend billions of more dollars on content moderation uh, because they want to actually be the platform where people can trust. Uh, they can't make that choice because Facebook bought them and now they're sort of integrated in how much. Uh, they're working on these problems and it's a race to sweep the garbage under someone else's rug what we've seen unfortunately is instead of collaboration uh, between all these platforms in some cases we've seen hey look how bad their problems are because we don't want to pay attention to to, to ours not again because they're evil it's just game theory happening between the companies okay uh, it really does yeah. Yeah, thank you dr donovan uh, in your research you've looked at medical misinformation at scale and the role of the social media platforms could you please comment on how the sheer size of a few powerful platforms affects the problems that we should be addressing. Uh, yeah, and thank you, Senator Klobuchar, and I really look forward to reading your book, Antitrust. Um, <laughs> the problem of medical misinformation, of course, is one that uh, was exacerbated by the pandemic, but anti-vaccination activists have a long history of using social media in order to uh, attack the public understanding of science. But during the pandemic, of course, the way in which the tech companies have turned to medical misinformation is really, uh, it's like putting a Band-Aid um, on, on an open wound. Right now, what we need is a comprehensive plan for ensuring that people have access to timely, local, relevant, and accurate information, like public interest obligations. But instead, what we have is a very uh, slapdash approach to you know, whatever the breaking news event is of the day. And so uh, I do think that the size of the platform and the way in which medical misinformation scales much more quickly than any intervention is uh, probably the most pressing public health issue of our time. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Bickert, a recent poll found that nearly one in four Americans said they will not get the coronavirus vaccine. Meanwhile, a recent report from the Center for Countering Digital Hate identified 12 specific content producers as the original source of, of an estimated 65% of coronavirus disinformation online. Recently, Senator Lujan and I, after he conducted a hearing, sent a letter to um, to Jack Dorsey and Mark Zuckerberg calling on them to re remove these individuals from the platforms. Uh, do you agree that more action needs to be taken? What's the response to our letter? I guess I'd start with you, uh, Ms. Bickard, and then uh, go to you, uh, Ms. Culbertson. Senator, thank you, and thank you for the letter as well. I know that we've uh, assessed that content and uh, removed those accounts that were violating, and I can I can follow up more with you on the specific details of that. But uh, more broadly, and I think this is a really important issue, uh, we know that we have to get it right when it comes to uh, misinformation around COVID. One of our goals is to help 50 million people get vaccinated. We're doing that both proactively 
through partnerships with local and national health authorities, making sure that we're directing people to authoritative health information, including where they can get vaccinated. And we've now directed, we've connected more than 2 billion people with those authoritative health resources. But okay. we also, since the very beginning, have been partnering with the CDC to remove content that contradicts CDC guidance that could lead to uh, an increased risk that people could contract or spread COVID. Um, and that, that includes removing over 12 million pieces of safety-related uh, COVID-19 misinformation. Okay, and in my role in the Commerce Committee, of course, Senator Cantwell is leading a bill on privacy. Do you agree that consumers should have the ability to access their data and control how it is used, including what data is used in social media company algorithms? Do you give customers that ability now for both content and advertising algorithms? Ms. Bickard. Uh, Senator, thank you. We do give people a, a number of uh, controls. That includes everything from the ability to download your own information, remove it, control who can see your posts, um, uh, see uh, what type of, you can opt out of our algorithm. Um, you can see who can see your content at any time and you can change those Is settings. Is the company then supportive of our bill on privacy? Senator Cantwell. Uh, Senator, I, mm -hmm. I, I'd have to have our, our U.S. public policy team follow up with you on the specifics okay. of that. But I All right. Controls okay. Are very thank, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to, um, I'll ask, that I can see uh, Senator Coons over his mask is raising his eyebrows at me. That's a sign enough is enough. No, no. Uh, the, the, the chairman welcomes additional questions <laughs> from the celebrated author of an outstanding book on antitrust. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, I was just going to ask, I'll ask one more question then of Ms. Uh, Culbertson uh, from, the, from Twitter. Uh, just the original question uh, that I had asked um, Ms. Bickert about the disinformation dozen, as we call them, the accounts um, online. And of course, some of these issues that I've had, I'm talking about with market power, uh, is not as applicable to Twitter, which I appreciate. Um, uh, but uh, as a competitive, uh, a competitive platform. But could you at least uh, answer the question here about this disinformation dozen? Certainly, thank you for the question. Uh, we have and are continuing to review this particular group of individuals um, against our policies, and we have taken enforcement action on several of, of these ind individuals. Our team will be following up this week with all of the details around that. Um, and also, I just wanted to note that while we are competitors, we are partners to address a lot of really harmful content and content um, issues. We've collaborated on COVID. We work together on terrorism, child sexual exploitation, opioids. Um, so I, I take issue with the premise that was mentioned earlier. Um, there is a collaboration across industry to address some of the most harmful content on the Internet. Um, and we also invest heavily in our partnerships with experts, especially around COVID. We've worked very closely with the CDC, HHS, the White House to not only enforce against our rules, but to also ensure that people sure. have that people have the credible information on our service. So were you saying you take issue with something that I'd said or was it? No, 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 Senator, no, Senator. One of the, one of the other panelists um, oh, okay. suggested that we have a competitive edge to compete on addressing these harms where we actually collaborate in a lot of these areas. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. We now go to uh, Senator Kennedy, uh, remote.